Hey everyone, welcome back. This one here is a quick fun video looking at how Zaku's kit interacts with guns if you're interested in going that route instead of entirely relying on Grasp of Lock. These are also setups that will be taking a look at how you can use guns even without his armor strip from Gaze. Granted, this does limit his repertoire, but I wanted to take a look at the gun options that are also considered, to put it lightly, no longer good enough for meta. They aren't bad by any means and are actually quite strong, but were definitely interesting picks on Zaku for several reasons. This also means that other weapons can also work, and that everything, as well as what I show you today, would be even stronger in his gaze armor strip areas if you built for that. Remember, the point of this video is to actually interact with this kit. So a quick overview on what mechanic we're using today. I've explained in the past that you can use Zata's Whisper not just as a damage ability, but also as a pseudo-magnetized bubble that magnifies, haha, <laughs> your damage by allowing projectile weapons to stick around a lot longer and land extra hits on your enemies. This works best with grouping helmets with varying degrees of effectiveness. This lets you play similar-ish to Meg without playing Meg. And this also changes her playstyle, because instead of casting stationary bubbles on Zaku, which would be admittedly OP, you are instead casting and forgetting Zata Whisper since it sticks to you and procs on any enemy you hit. The void status effect that acts like a miniature magnetize procs using the weapon's modded status chance, so hybrid weapons will be best for this purpose. Due to the small size of the bubbles, grouping helmets greatly magnify the power of Zata by minimizing the odds a projectile will manage to escape before expiring its lifespan. In this kit, Zaku's 4 is only there as a slight slow CC. Your 3 is entirely optional as you want, but this means that adds on to the kit rather than being an unnecessary intrusion into the rotation. Rather, I'd say accused would be decent CC if you need it and the armor strip will not be that effective on this build since we aren't building for strength. Your core will be as 1 and today ensnare subsumed over as 2. If you still want to use as 2, you can subsume ensnare over as 3 instead. Just keep in mind that his grasp of block doesn't proc void status bubbles at all and since we're not building for strength they won't do that much damage so it would purely just be a mini turret on your shoulders. And that really isn't what I'm trying to show today. First, let's look at that Zaku build. It's pretty simple. This is a utility Zaku setup, not a DPS one. I don't care about strength because our purpose is to proc Zata's void bubbles for the magnetize effect and not for the extra damage. I don't care about the triple dip Zata proc as much since it doesn't create a dot and because we actually already have enough damage on the build. You might say that this guts Zaku's kit but if you've been paying attention to my channel I have offered a ton of Zaku builds already in the past as well as recently. This is just another angle on what his kit can do. If anything, you could say this is why he is so diverse and why so many people like him. Now, one thing I'm on the fence about is this Cunning Drift mod. It only increases range to 280 from 265, so you may want to consider running Constitution instead to bump duration up to 123. This would increase Zada's duration to 43 seconds instead of 33, but as you can see, it does already last 33, which is decent enough. And it's recastable whenever you want. But this 280 range means his ensnare has a 28 meter pull radius. This is enough to pull the entire tile on smaller ones and half tile even on the largest. This also massively improves your DPS capabilities because the more overlapping void bubbles are present, the longer and more likely your projectile weapons are to get stuck in them. Efficiency is at 160% so we don't really have to worry about energy as this build doesn't even use arcane energize. Wow, what a unique setup, am I right? You could slot Streamline 2 if you want, but I just really wanted that 280 range pull. Besides, casting both your 1 and 2 only casts 30 energy, and this should be able to kill a whole swathe of enemies, so I'm not too worried. Vigor Swap here is entirely optional, and free damage if you want to bring in Melee Primer, which I will show later. It also gives you extra holster speed in case you actually want to swap to your other gun. Duration to 95 is decent enough because like I said, your 1 still lasts 33 seconds this way. This also barely affects ensnare because it already has high duration at base for absolute CC, so I'm not worried about that either. Rolling Guard is present as a safety because we don't have enough Augur mods or Brief Respite available to fully restore our shields with a single cast even with our 4. We have 3 Augur mods on the build because our pistol carries 2 and Augur reach. Honestly, it should be fine though because this ensnare has ridiculous range. Operator is also always an option. Prime sure footed because getting knocked sucks. If you don't have this, slot handspring instead. Our aura today is more for gun support again. 
and thus I'm bringing combat discipline. I have a rank 2 one, but if your polarities were right for this Augur Reach, you would be able to slot a rank 0. We're pairing this with Arcane Avenger as always, because the self damage from combat discipline can proc it and improves our damage consistency on certain weapons that we will bring and can't hit 100% crit otherwise. Arcane Acceleration is flexible. Basically, use this slot for a fire rate arcane of any weapon type you intend to DPS with. Rifles, stick with Acceleration. Pistols, use Velocity. Shotguns, Tempo. Anyways, that's it for the Zaku build, let's take a look at the three weapons today. The first one is a love letter to all Stalta mates. This is the OG Charge and Go Gun, the first one that had good crit stats with alternate fire modes. This let you choose between searing Han bullets to prime the enemy up, or launching that miniature nuke with a small delay before the explosion. Actually, hey, when do we get a 10 at lens, DE? The 0.4 seconds explosion delay on Stalta is noticeable. Lens sits in an old era, with the delay over 3 times higher at 1.3 seconds and we can't do anything about it. The only thing higher is Proboscis Cernos at 1.7, but at least it pulls enemies in so they can't get away. Anyways, the Stalta build. There is a certain streamer friend of mine that hates this weapon because he has too many failings, but that's alright. It was the ancestor of charged boom guns, since then we have had Trumna, Queller, Prisma Tetra, Ambassador, and maybe even a few more I can't remember right now. The biggest complaints about Stalta was that 1. It didn't have enough ammo reserved for the alt fire. 2. The alt fire was insanely slow to fire, like really slow, even worse than Queller with an innate damage shape that couldn't dot. 3. Small magazine even for primary fire, and 4. Couldn't consistently one-shot enemies on alt fire to justify its use. The third problem is a non-issue so long as the enemies you shoot are dead, which is where we will solve the fourth problem as well today by actually making the alt fire kill everything reliably in one shot. The first issue will still have to be band-aided with ammo mutation, but hopefully the consistent kills help. And while we can't necessarily fix the charge time problem fully, the build can alleviate somewhat while retaining maximum KPS. This is the Stalta build. This may look a little bit weird to you. An all fire build with punch through? Doesn't this cause explosion to not happen until it hits a wall? That would normally be true, but see, this is where Zada's Whisper and Incinera comes in. The Void procs will trap the main projectile, passing between bodies until it runs out of punch through and then it will explode. But wait, if you want the explosion, why bother with punch through? That's the secret. You see, Stalta is another one of those weapons with multiplicative scaling with Galvanized Aptitude. It treats it like Eclipse, so every single SAS effect inflicted boosts your output by a final multiplicative amount. But it only works on the main shot, not the AoE. So actually, we're using the all fire main shot to do all the damage, but what does the AoE do then? Simple, its purpose is to reliably void proc the entire crowd. The Zada hit is a separate instance of damage and inherits the weapon status chance. This build has 96% status so it is nearly guaranteed to proc void on everything within its radius. The main shot will pass through and get stuck in a large part of the crowd and proc a ton of dots and do nasty damage before exploding. The AoE ensures that if you do need a follow up shot, that second shot will stay even longer inside and pass through even more enemies due to the AoE void proc. Now how can that first shot reliably kill everything if there isn't a void already set up on the group? That's why we mod for gas. Gas accounts for over 50% of elements on this build, and at 96% status it is extremely likely to proc. We also have galvanized chamber to scale the multi-shot. Now because we don't have hunter munitions, you may be worried about the damage I'll put to scale up the merciless stacks, but that actually isn't a problem. Stalta's raw damage is so high and you can aim it at heads and it bounces around so many times. Even unboosted shots will still do a ton of damage. Damage. By taking gas, this also ensures that even though you don't hit literally every enemy in the crowd, everything will still take damage due to the AoE of gas that persists. This power is magnified by the insanely high raw damage of Stalta, combined with the force crits and the multi shot spreading to multiple enemies while trapped inside of the bubbles. This gets around the unreliable slash conversion from Hunter Munitions on Stalta, where everything depends on that single AoE hit with only 30% chance per multi shot. I slotted Critical Delay for even more critical chance and stacking Arcane Avenger to hit 165 for mostly oranges, but if you want to maximize fire rate, you can just run Point Strike instead since the weapon will still be at 100% crit chance. The reason why I was willing to slot the Corrupted variant is we have double sources of fire rate, both Prime Shred and Arcane Acceleration on Zaku, so this minus 20% fire rate is nearly invisible. It would only cut your charge rate from 0.71 down to 0.65 seconds by using Point Strike instead when Arcane Acceleration is active. The advent of Weapon Arcanes also lets us cut the reload down to just 1.4 seconds, which is quite comfy. Do keep in mind though that the charge shot reload is slower than the primary fire, but really it doesn't matter here since all fire is all we'll be using. Stalta showcase time? 
easy. Spawn the enemies, cast Zada, cast and snare. Shoot the enemies until you get the first kills. Shouldn't be too bad. Portable magnetize without having to recast it. On some enemy groups, you don't even have to cast and snare, and you can still kill single enemies with the charge shot if you really want to. Because of the high raw damage and radiation typing against armor while also creating the lasting gas dot. Let's move on to the second weapon. This is an interesting one because it doesn't actually have to be on Zaku. And it introduces a new principle. This is the Shidu. It is a gas slash hybrid build where the slash functions to enable you get your first merciless stacks. You may notice the rank 4 shred on this build. This is actually intentional. Remember how we use that as Whisper and Stalta to trap the main shot for gas? We're doing the same thing here, but without Zada. Stalta takes a long time to charge, so I had to make sure it spreads to as many enemies at once on a single shot before exploding. Exploding. Shidu is different. It is basically an auto rifle with AoE. We can proc a ton of sasses already without Zada's Whisper due to the high fire rate. If you do use Zada, then slot a prime shred so the shot gets stuck longer. But this setup works even with just ensnare. So why rank 4 shred? Well, I wanted exactly 1 meter punch through in this weapon. Humanoids like Rainier require 0.6 meter punch through to shoot past them. Quadrupeds like Infested Chargers take 1 meter to punch through them. Running a rank 4 shred ensures that you will only ever punch through one enemy and then it will detonate on the second. Of course, with higher pull radius on ensnare, there will be even more enemies, so you may actually just want to run a primed shred if you're using max range like in this case, but the purpose here is a thought exercise. My goal is to have enough punch through to hit several enemies enemies with the main shot and proc gas on them while still ensuring the shot will explode with a radial attack for AoE corrosive procs. The weapon only has 55% status on the build, but you have decent fire rate so it's fine. You will simultaneously strip armor while piling on gas to multiple enemies at once due to punch through. Shidu is another one of those weapons that scales multiplicatively with galvanized CO like Eclipse instead of Additive, but only on the main shot and not on the AoE, so you can see now why I want a punch through to create multiple AoE gas dots boosted by it. The AoE once again acts mainly as utility instead of damage, but does add some corrosive as it is generally a good damage type. Hunching Munitions, as I said, helps to get that first couple of kills to proc Galvanize Aptitude stacks and Merciless, as Shidu doesn't have the massive base damage behind it like Stalta. Merciless cuts down the reload more and makes it more comfortable, while Arcane Acceleration significantly boosts your fire rate. I chose to slot Critical Delay because we are once again double diffing fire rate with Shred and Arcane Acceleration. Small price to pay. So we only need a single elemental mod on the build, Toxin. This is what sets Shidu apart from other builds and weapons and it allows a crazy build like this because the innate heat on the main shot gives us gas and will be the gun CO boosted dot while the electric on the AoE becomes corrosive and becomes the utility proc. This allows us to save slots and still mod for both crit stats, multi-shot, slash, fire rate, and even the prime bane, which is important because it double dips on gas for 2.4 times more damage. The Exilus is whatever you want, I just pick projectile speed since, well, we don't need more ammo as it regenerates. Showcase for Shidu? Sure. So like I said, all we need is ensnare. You cast and shoot. Simple as that. If you want to use Zata, then slot Prime Shred so the shot bounces around more. But the important part here is that the successive shot guarantees you're max procking corrosive. Without having to mod for it on your main damage component, the gas on the main shot. This ensures you don't dilute your damage type or waste slots that don't increase gas damage. Therefore, you're still maximizing the amount of damage every gas proc will do which lets you obliterate your enemies. The third weapon today we're looking at is the Mutilus Cernos. I'm bringing this one back as a love letter again. People have said, and I agree, this weapon has eclipsed over time by Probasa Cernos and Brahma. It is also now eclipsed by Daikyu, as I showed in my one-shot Daikyu monster gas build from a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that yet, you should really watch it. I turned the single target Daikyu into an insane AoE killer with just one shot and it barely needs buffs at all, it's only using ensnare. But today, this is about the Mutal Cerno, so this shoots pretty fast, don't be discouraged by the charge rate shown here. As soon as Arcane Acceleration procs, it has a charge time of just 0.24 seconds. With Point Strike, it would be instead at 0.2 seconds, but honestly, I prefer Critical Delay here for crit consistency. You aren't going to time your shots perfectly anyway, so who cares about the extra 40 milliseconds? Anyways, this is not a gas build, because we have an insane amount of electric procs, so we're building for that instead. Why electric? Because the Mutilus Cernos does not have high enough damage to really support a gas build with its unreliable crits like the Stalta, and shoots too slow to compete properly with the likes of Shidu, so I want to play to its strengths. While it does shoot slower, we will instead overwhelm the enemy with sheer amounts of statics procs from electric and split flights which lets us reach a 400% multi-shot near instantly. Keep in mind it is hard to showcase split flights in Simulacrum because it resets after 2 seconds you need to respawn enemies. In Steel Path you have much more consistent encounter rates and this won't be as much of an issue. 
So the premise here is simple. Zadis Whisper will trap the mass amount of arrows and enemies, significantly boosting the amount of electric procs you get and also the chaining effect between enemies due to more procs and enemies hit. Electric doesn't chain to absolutely everything possible around it reliably, but at least we can turn it into a true AoE by the sheer number of arrows and trap durations in the bubble. Split Flights will also stack instantly due to the punch through on the build. Clouds left behind with the arrows when they reach their final mark force proc toxin, but they will also inherit the electric element and produce additional cross procs after initial hits that last in an AoE. Zadis Whisper ensures that these bubbles remain over enemies despite modding for punch through on the weapon. Therefore, you're stacking both electric and cross to shred enemies with. Split Flights is more important than Galvanized Chamber because it produces a higher amount of maximum multi-shot and procs instantly without requiring kills. This is very good for a slower firing weapon like bows compared to auto rifles or big crit sticks. Two slots on an electric to maximize its elemental weighting and scaling damage. Standard crit damage and prime bane to double dip the electric procs for 2.4 times more damage. This last slot I have opted for hammer shot. While the crit damage it offers is relatively less than the amount of base damage serration could give when considering final total damage even with primary merciless in play, the gap isn't too large, and actually the 80% status from Hammershot brings a massive DPS boost in this case and pushes it above serration. We don't mod Galvanize Aptitude on bows because it doesn't work properly. If you're curious, it is scaling only off 10 damage instead of 410 base damage the middle Cernos actually has. So yeah, super shit. Alright, time for the final showcase of this weapon. This one does require Zata, unlike Shidu, so make sure you cast that at the start. Then you just go ensnaring enemies and shoot away. It takes a bit to get the first kill since we don't have base damage like I said, but remember this Zaku actually does have vigorous swap so feel free to proc that to set up your first kill. Anyways, it's pretty simple. Once you get that first kill, your arrows will go haywire and bounce around and tag everything else. It'll be extremely easy to clean shop and kill them all after that. I'm not going to give steel pad showcases of these weapons today because it should be pretty obvious how this will perform when you're using an ensnare build. Enemies will group the same way or even better in missions due to the increased steel path spawns and Zadis Whisper basically acts like a mini magnetize to keep the shots inside. Here's to yet another way to play Zaku. And one last thing, I didn't even use primers in any of the showcases today, but I did want to include them because that was the entire point of the vigorous swap on Zaku. And this lets you benefit from the damage buff as you instant swap between guns and melee to prime before closing the gap. There are two main melee primers I use in Endurance. This is the Zorus, a primer focused on piling as much viral as possible and weighted as such. It has infinite combo and large AoE on bounces, so you basically build up to 220 combo and throw it at groups. You never heavy detonate, it will bounce 4 times and proc a bunch of viral and return to you. Bonus points because you can throw this right after you cast a snare in the air while also closing the gap. Enemies will be primed by the time you get close to shoot. The other primer is an Exodia Contagion built with Plague Kiwar, Sikala, and Iquana 2 Jai. Besides, polearm stabs have the fastest swing animation so you can get back to doing what you want sooner. Longer range also means it's easier to build combo in the melee. Play keyword results in the highest status possible Zaw, and this primer is slightly different in purpose than the Zorus. Its function isn't to proc a ton of viral, although it is capable of doing that with repeated throws. Rather, its function is to proc as many different status effects as possible at once. If you look on the left, this is why there are 6 different status present that I can proc, each evenly weighted to give fair odds. This even balances it nicely with the innate IPS, which I didn't mod for. Weeping Wounds brings this up to above 200% status at 12x combo, which is maintained with Drifting Contact contact and secondary dexterity on whatever primer, which in this case was Epitaph today, or non-DPS gun you equip, which gives us an extra 7.5 seconds duration on your melee. Because the drain on this Zaku is very low for ability rotations, you could even just take Naramon for a power spike for a super reliable 12x combo that can't really decay much. Just like the Zorus, you can throw this while aim gliding in the air after you cast Ensnare. Just remain gliding and press melee in the direction of your enemies. Simple as that, and there you go. I hope this has shed some more light on the actual strength of what Zada's Whisper allows. If anything, you could even bring a Panzer that I did not showcase or use today that would be bringing this Viral Quills build. Now, this can work on other weapons as I mentioned, but I just want to showcase a standout today that I've often gone neglected over time. I know some of you will ask for this as I didn't showcase it, but yes, Exergist works with this too, and extremely well. I just don't own one. You can treat this very similar to the OG mech setups, but on a different frame kit. 
take this knowledge into the world and go have fun. Feel free to try it out on other setups. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering Sisters of Parvels, Plague Star, and now even new war updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm be the first to get the info and content out when new war drops. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.